So basically, I need to um, heat the glass in a, a flame. This is um, natural gas and oxygen. And there's a center flame on this torch, and then there's an outer flame to make it nice and hot. And I'm just, I have to continually rotate the glass in the flame to create, to get it um, heated evenly. What I'm going to do right now is just kind of pull, uh, it's called pulling points for glass blowers, um, but I'm just going to make a little handle for me to hold on to. It's easier to rotate the glass when it's a smaller diameter, so I'm going to just kind of make little handles for me. Learning to rotate the glass is one of the trickiest things in learning glass blowing, to get your right and left hand to move at the same pace if they get off and the glass will twist when it's hot. I did a four-year apprenticeship program here at ASU to learn glass blowing, and I trained with my dad. And, um, I'm actually third-generation glass blower. My, my dad learned from his dad, so it's, it's a fun, fun job. Just make sure that's cool, real quick. But the, another cool thing about this Pyrex glass is it's really good um, insulating material. I can touch this close into. I, ha I have this in a three thousand degree. Really close in there, like it doesn't travel through that at all. All right, let's make this nice and straight. Rotate it on center, and then I'm going to pull another point over here. Just kind of keep rotating. If I weren't rotating, this would just drop, drip off there, like. here and this will become the the beak of the swan or I mean the neck of the swan. A little bit for the head. So like I said all the same the same techniques I use every day to make scientific glass. I 
like if I were, this, when I made the body of the swan, that's the same technique to make a round bottom. If I were gonna make a round bottom class, instead of stretching it apart, I would kind of push it together. Um, this is a, a knife, a uh, strong metal called tungsten carbide, and it just puts a little scratch in the glass. It allows me to break it off where I wanna break it off there. Um, I'm gonna cool briefly before I, um, I'm going to put a little flat spot on the bottom for the, using this graphite paddle, sit on the bench. needed to, like this little container, I had to make a little base so it would sit flat. And that's what's using this graphite rod. Just heat the glass nice and uniform. And then using, this is a lot like working with ceramics, but I can't obviously put my finger in there and clear it out. <laughs> so we just insert this rod and then kind of clear it out. Do you have any questions about anything here? You make it look sweet. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know many other glass floors? Like, you know, universities? Um, I can't imagine that there's Yeah, many. I mean, there's most. It's kind of a dying, it's a little bit of a dying uh, profession. But um, U of A has a glass, they have two glass floors. The one just retired. Um, actually, a father and son down there. Um, if, there's a, if there's a pretty decent size, um, yeah, and the, just, if the chemistry department has a good grad program, there's usually a glass floor. Um, I would say my guess, like I, I belong to American Scientific Glass Floor Society. Um, in the last meeting I went to in May, there were probably three or four hundred people. Mm, wow. Yeah, there 
some from all the people, uh, scientific glass blowers from all over the world there. There's not, not a lot of women in scientific glass blowing. So I just polished that, I didn't close it. It's just like